Hi, this is Dan. Thanks for listening to my podcast. I trust that it'll encourage you and build your faith. If you'd like to connect with me further, visit my website at revivalnow.com. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at RevivalNowDanSteep and Twitter at RevivalNowDan. You can also download the Revival Now app. Enjoy the podcast and share it with a friend. Welcome to the Dan Steep Podcast. I'm Dan Steep, and uh, this episode, we're going to be talking about courage. I want to share with you four characteristics of the courageous. And uh, I'm going to be, I'll just give you some, some scriptures, um, whether you can write them down, or because I know a lot of people listen to this while they're driving and so forth, but uh, you can just kind of know where a lot of these scriptures that I'm going to be talking about and talking around uh, in this episode come from Numbers 13 and 14. That's where the spies, the 12 spies were sent out, and Caleb and Joshua, uh, they filed their minority report <clears throat> amongst the uh, evil report of unbelief of uh, the other 10 spies, uh, also from Joshua chapter 6. Uh, Judges chapter 7, verses 1 through 25, 1 Samuel 17, and 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 8 through 17. <clears throat> Four characteristics of the, of the courageous. So, what is courage? Courage is a sign of of God's inner workings. Courage is born out of faith. So I'm sharing these four characteristics of courage, these, these four signs or indications that God is at work within us. And the first one is this, <clears throat> intimacy. Intimacy. <clears throat> now I don't, you know, unfortunately... Um, a lot of people, certainly a lot of men, sort of conflate intimacy with, with sex, you know, with sexual intimacy, but intimacy is, is simply uh, a closeness. It's an inner knowing, if you will. Uh, and, and so in terms of our intimacy with God, um, you know, there, there's an obvious partnership with God, a closeness, a uh, closeness relationality within that relationship not not just a, a business um, relationship but a close relationship a friendship a, a give and take so if you look in as we look at Moses uh, the scripture says in numbers 13 1 the Lord said to Moses I'm going to lift just pieces of these scriptures out to, to highlight the relationality uh, Joshua 6, 2, then the Lord said to Joshua. And you can go down the line in Judges chapter 7, verses 2, 4, 5, 7, and 9. What, what does it say? The Lord said to Gideon. The Lord said to Gideon. There the Lord told Gideon. The Lord said to Gideon. During the night the Lord said to Gideon. And then 2 Kings 7, uh, chapter 6. We look at verse 17 and verse 20, it says, And Elijah prayed, Elisha, sorry. And then after they entered the city, Elisha prayed. So there's, there's an intimacy, there's a, there's a prayer life, and all prayer is, is conversing with God. And you know, a conversation Im implies uh, a two-directional. It takes two people to actually have a conversation. One speaking back and forth, giving feedback. And, and so... You see in uh, these these scriptures that are highlighting men of God that were mightily used by God, Moses, Joshua, Gideon, Elisha, they had a, a close, enduring relationship with God. There was intimacy. Uh, the second characteristic of the courageous is faith. Faith. Numbers chapter 14, verses 6 through 9. 
Joshua son of Nun and Caleb son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had explored the land, they tore their clothes and said to the entire Israelite assembly, The land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he'll lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. There it is. He'll give it to us. They said, only do not rebel against God and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will swallow them up. This is, this is just pure faith talking here. They said, their protection is gone. The Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. What, this is just dripping with faith. In Numbers 14, 6 to 9. So that, that is critical. Caleb and Joshua, they believed. They had faith in what God said. And they, they did not waver. They fully expected that as long as they did what they were supposed to do, God would do what he said. And the scripture says that God faithfully performs his word. Now we look at 1 Samuel chapter 17. Uh, this is the exchange between David and Saul before David was going to go out and face Goliath. David said to Saul, Your servant, speaking of himself, has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, struck it, and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he's defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. End quote. What are we talking about? Pure, pure faith with no mixture of unbelief. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16, Elisha said, Don't be afraid. Those who are with us are more than who are with them. It's just faith. It's critical. It's, it's the second characteristic of the, crea uh, of, of the courageous, intimacy and faith. Now, the Hebrews writer said, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. So when you're hoping for something, faith is the reality of that thing. He goes on to say, and this is Hebrews 11.1, 1, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, it is the evidence of things we cannot see. Faith is evidence. Evidence of what we cannot see. The King James says it's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things unseen. And, and you see that. You see the, the, the substance or the reality of what is hoped for and the evidence of things that we cannot say, see through everything that, that Caleb and Joshua said, everything that, that David said to Saul, everything that Elisha said, full evidence of things we cannot see. So intimacy and faith, the third characteristic of the crea uh, courageous is vision. And, and in some ways, I find vision to be very close, uh, very similar to, to faith. Because if you think about the evidence that the Hebrews writer gave us for faith, or, or the, the uh, definition, it's the evidence of things we cannot see. So it's seeing things through the eyes of faith. And when we, we perceive through the eyes of faith, we see things that those people who are not in faith cannot see. And when you have that kind of faith and you have this kind of vision, it can be lonely. It, it separates. 
Uh, it's hard to, to see what other people can't see. You try to talk to people about it, but, you know, they, they can't see what you can see, and so uh, the conversation's often fruitful and, and, and it can even be frustrating. This vision in Numbers chapter 14, verse 9, again, uh, we, we read this earlier, as Caleb and Joshua were speaking, they said, do not rebel against the Lord. And do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone. How did they know their protection was gone? They had an evidence of things unseen. They, they saw those giants in the, in the promised land the way that God saw them, through the eyes of faith. You know, Jesus said at one point, he said, have faith in God. And, and when he said that, uh, he was actually saying, this is, a, this is a, an accurate and acceptable translation of, of that phrase, is this, have the faith of God, or have a God faith. That's seeing through the eyes of faith. When you have that kind of faith, you see things differently. You perceive things. You, you receive information differently. They looked out, right? And the, the, the 10 who gave the evil report of unbelief, they saw giants. Caleb and Joshua saw people whose protection was gone. And if your protection is gone, it doesn't matter how big you are. They said their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. It's vision. In verse 13, verse 31 of Numbers, but the men who had gone up with him, they said, this is the, the, the ten you know, unbelieving spies, the men who had gone up with him said, we can't attack these people. They're stronger than we are. So two people, had faith vision, and they saw what they saw was an unprotected people. Their protection was gone. The ten unbelieving spies, they said, we can't attack them. They're stronger than we are. So one saw people stronger than they are. One saw people exposed and vulnerable and ready to be taken. So, hey, I'm, I'm standing with Caleb and Joshua. And any time that you... Uh, stand in the minority because of your faith. Count it all joy. You're in good company. This was a, a report, not a recommendation. They, they, were, they were standing, we must stand with God. That's what Caleb and Joshua were saying. It's a report, it's not a recommendation. It's facts, it's not feelings. I say truth when the facts argue differently. Because, you know, for the, for the ten unbelieving spies, they saw what they saw. And what they saw was a fact. They were looking at it. So when facts argue with the truth, stand in truth. Stand in faith in God's Word. These are the, the characteristics of the courageous. They're close. They're, they're intimate with God. They're people of faith. And how do you get faith? Romans ten seventeen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So that means that they're, they're people of the Word. If you're a person of the Word, you must be a person of faith. And if you're a person of faith, you inevitably are a person of the Word. And then vision. Faith vision. Seeing through the eyes of faith. 1 Samuel chapter 17. We'll read verse 37 and then verses 45 through 47. This is, this is David again. 
The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. Now, this is what David said to Goliath. You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you've defied. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered there, gathered here, will know this not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you all into our hands. That's vision. And the prophet said, Elisha said in 2 Kings 6.16, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. There was an army standing in front of them, a a coalition army of multiple nations, but angel armies encamped about them all. Hallelujah. That's a faith statement. That's an intimacy statement. That's a vision statement. And all these things, faith, intimacy, and vision, they lead to characteristic number four which is action. The courageous take action. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians one twenty seven that God has chosen the foolish to confound the wise. In other words, there's God's supply versus our limited answers. God's supply confounds the wisdom of this world. You know, in, in Joshua 6, the children of Israel, you know, in Joshua, they were, they were given a battle plan, uh, a, a very, uh, by, by the standards of the wisdom of this world, a ridiculous battle plan, doomed to fail. They're just going to go march around the walls exposing themselves and give a shout and what? According to the wisdom of this world, they would just be picked off and slaughtered. But God has chosen the foolish to confound the wise. When you execute a battle plan like that, only God can get the glory. Because from a a military strategy standpoint, uh, that is doomed to fail. What a battle plan. Right? But but the battle is the Lord's. Joshua 7, 22, when the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp or it's Judges 7.22, throughout the camp, uh, to turn on each other with their swords. And so this is how Gideon defeats the Midianites. 300 trumpets sound. That's all they had. 300. God had whittled uh, his army down to 300. And it didn't matter. Because at the sound of the trumpet, God caused uh, the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. 1 Samuel 17, 47, All those gathered here will know that this is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give all of you into our hands. So you've got Joshua, you've got Gideon, you've got David. Action. It is a, it's a crucible moment. When you take faith action, when all the data says otherwise. But it doesn't matter. This, this, this point of action, this fourth characteristic of the courageous, it doesn't matter how much intimacy, faith, and vision you have if it doesn't lead you to action. God had spoken in all of these circumstances, but there was still work to do. 
Numbers 13.30, Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. They still had to do it. They still had to step by faith. Faith steps are hard. It's, it's stepping into the void, into the unknown, into the unseen. It's something you only do when you know what God has said. Joshua 6, right, going back to Joshua. Um, on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times. This is at Jericho uh, in the same manner, except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the, so there, there's your battle plan right there. Get up at daybreak, march around the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priests sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you this city. When the trumpet sounded, the people shouted. At the sound of the trumpet, when uh, the people gave a loud shout, the wall collapsed. So every man charged straight in, and they took the city. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Back to Judges 7, with Gideon and his 300 men. They reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The 300 companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. How about David? Back to Second, First Samuel 17. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and fell face down on the ground. There you have it. You know, the, the, the Hebrew name for God, Jehovah, uh, it, it, in the Old Testament, it's the word Yahweh. Now, it, it's actually what they call a tetragrammaton, which is four consonants together with no vowels, Y-H-W-H. But we've, we've added the A and the E to, to have some sense of, you know, structure to, to be able to pronounce the word. But the original pronunciation is unknown because, you know, out of reverence for God's name, it was never pronounced. When the vowel points were added to the Hebrew consonant text, um, the Jewish scribes inserted into Yahweh uh, the vowels for Adonai, or Lord. So... We have these instances throughout the Old Testament where you have ten combinations of, this, of the word Jehovah. You've got Jehovah Jireh, which means God will provide. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah is my banner. Jehovah Rohi, Jehovah is my shepherd. Uh, Jehovah Rapha, which means Jehovah heals. Jehovah Shalom, which means Jehovah is peace. Jehovah Shama, which means Jehovah is there. Jehovah Sidkenu, which means Jehovah is our righteousness. Jehoazabad, which means Jehovah has bestowed. And Jehozadak, which means Jehovah is righteous. And then the word Jehu, which is Jehovah is he. That is the power of God. And all these stories that I, I, we, we highlighted in this episode, all are Old Testament stories, four characteristics of the courageous. You see, sorrow looks back. Worry looks around. But faith looks up.
intimacy, faith, vision, action. All born out of looking up. As the psalmist said, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Where does your help come from? Are you walking in a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Is your hope and your faith and your trust in him? Can you rely upon him? Regardless of what the circumstances look like around you? Are you ready to meet Jesus? Are you living for him? Can you remember a specific moment in your history when you acknowledged your sinfulness, repented of your sin, and received the free gift of salvation offered through Jesus Christ? If you cannot remember a clear moment in your life where you did that, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. You see, God is holy. By nature, it's who he is. He won't change it because he's bound himself to his word. And we're sinful by our nature. It's a condition that we were born into. But God took the initiative to remedy our condition. He sent his only son, Jesus, who died on the cross to bridge the gap between the holiness of God and the unholiness of man. And all that we can do, all that we need to do in response to that is simply recognize, repent, and receive. We first must recognize our sin. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I have to recognize that my sin is what's killing me. My sin is what's responsible for the, the condition of my life. And it's not just killing me, it's killing those around me. And the only way to peace is through faith in Jesus Christ. After I recognize my sin, I repent of that sin. The word repent simply means to change. Change your mind, change your direction, change your lifestyle. It's to turn from a life of sin and turn to Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and the salvation of your soul. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, and you will perish too unless you repent of your sins and turn to God. So we recognize our sin, repent of our sin, and then lastly, we simply receive or commit your heart to Jesus by faith. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So I'd like to offer a simple prayer of salvation. This prayer contains all three of these elements that I've just spoken to you about. To recognize, repent, and receive. And if you'll pray this prayer after me from a place of sincerity in your heart, you can have the assurance of your salvation. A a home in heaven reserved for you. And you can begin to walk the walk of faith. Like the Apostle Paul said, we walk by faith and not by sight. All that starts today by praying this prayer with me. Just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I admit that I've sinned. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And he rose from the grave to give me victory over sin and death. I confess my sinfulness. I repent and turn away from my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and make me a new person. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, if you pray that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I'd like to invite you to go to our website at RevivalNow.com. Go to RevivalNow.com, and you'll find on the landing page of our website a big red button that says, I just got saved. Click that button. It'll give you the opportunity to, um, you can view some video resources that I prepared for you to help you get started in your Christian life. And uh, if you fill out your contact information, we will send you some resources to help you get started in your Christian life. 
That's it. Simple as that. We'll also pray for you by name. And that will be the end of it. You will not hear from us again unless you reach out to us. But while you're there, our website, poke around. See how God's using this ministry to reach a million souls with the gospel of Jesus Christ in a 10-year window of time that ends uh, in 2031. Amen. Hey, I appreciate you guys so much for joining me on this broadcast, or not broadcast, but episode. Um, I, I trust it's been helpful and encouraging to you. Please do me a favor and uh, share, the, share the podcast with your friends. Use it to bring, bring encouragement to the people that, that you love and know. And uh, until next time, be blessed in Jesus' name.